Hi, this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi. I'm a physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And Tristan is a Corgi, and this is Conversations with a Corgi. Today, we are going to talk about another Tellington T Touch technique that I use pretty often, which is the zigzag T Touch. And it's fairly simple because it really is what it sounds like a zigzag across your dog or your horse or your kitty. I don't use it so much with kitties. With horses, the zigzag technique um, was originally developed because of the way horses mutually groom each other, scratching their withers. Fisky's running across the dining room table, come back. <laughs> um, and it replicates that sensation for a horse. And we often do it in long zigzag strokes down the horse's body or along the sides of his stomach and belly or along his croup or around his neck. We have found doing this with horses and in, with dogs as well, that this can help lift the back, which is really important if your dog is overweight or elderly or suffering from any kind of orthopedic problems in his legs. So lifting the back and using the abdominal muscles is really helpful. And I find with dogs, the zigzag technique is a really great thing to do to prepare your dog for grooming or given that my dog is shedding so profusely right now, it's a good way just to get some of the dead hairs off of him. That's a pleasant experience for him, which brushing is not always so pleasant for him. He's leaving. He's just walking across the dining room table like a kitty cat. The other wonderful thing about the zigzag technique is that with horses, especially, we've seen that it's useful to break a freeze. Now, Freeze is another part of what happens when you're in a sympathetic nervous system overwhelm. So you have fight, flight, freeze, faint. Those are your options when you are highly stressed and your sympathetic nervous system is out of balance. So freeze is one of those that we see with a horse, for instance, when he is reluctant to get into the trailer and he just shuts down and he's not going in. Um, we've often seen people who have quicker trained their horses to get in the trailer and the horse will walk up to the trailer but then fear overwhelms the training with the clicker and the horse just stands by the base of the trailer. I've had dogs freeze, um, for instance, when I've been working a, a timid dog in the labyrinth and then another dog, if they have issues with other dogs, um, is somewhere in his visual field, maybe even 30, 40 feet away the dog in the labyrinth will sometimes be so afraid or nervous that he goes into freeze and then the zigzag T-touch is a really good thing to do to break that freeze and help the dog continue to work with um, his person in the labyrinth. Tristan, you're going to have to stand up sooner or later. So I will show you the zigzag first on my stuffed corgi here from England. And again, it's a little hard to show this from my angle here. But your fingers are similarly curved like they would be in the bear touch. And really, depending on the animal, this can be quite scratchy using your nails, or it can be more with the flat of your hand, or with the, like what you would use for a raccoon touch. So you're just going to generally start at the shoulders and you just make zigzags up and down the animal's body like this. Now, if I had a much bigger dog, I'd have options of doing this along the midline like I am here or up on his back up here or down closer to his belly. With really wiggly, nervous dogs, I find it's really nice to just do a few of these on their hind end. And the thing about the zigzag T-touch is if you do it quickly, um, it helps a dog that's tense pay attention and slow down, you know, a nervous or a hyperactive dog. And if you do it slowly, it can calm a dog. When it's done quickly, it can activate the nervous impulses through the body. So I would do this fairly quickly, for instance, with a dog with DM. Now, <clears throat> with something systemic like EPM in a horse, I would definitely do this one, but I would do it slowly. Um, because their nervous system, because of the parasites in their central nervous system, is so overwhelmed and so hypersensitive. Um, and zigzag is a good thing to connect the front to the back of the horse if they have EPM. 
and it's a really good one to use for that condition, but I would do it slowly. And for dogs with DM, same thing. It's really good for them, and you might do it a little bit more slowly initially because they might be nervous about things in their hind end that feel different that they can't touch, um, that they can't feel. But as you do it more with them, I would do it quickly to activate the neural impulses. This corgi's little. So with a restless dog, you might start moving your hand more quickly and then gradually slow down as the dog starts to calm down. If you're about to go into agility competition and you want your dog to be awake, you can do a few of these quickly. It helps engage the abdominal muscles, which are a great thing to have activated when you're going into an agility competition with jumps and turns. So then you might do these more quickly. And I'll just show you on Madison, because she's furrier and sitting up, how I would do these with a bigger dog. You usually start by the shoulder of the neck, and you just run your hand in zigzags down the dog's body. And if I was about to take a dog like Madison, who stuffed into agility competition, I would do these zigzags and finish it with a little sweep up her tail. Or if you're about to take your horse into the jumping ring. And then if you want to do these slowly, it can be very calming. If you have a senior dog, and he's just sort of having a slow day. You want to connect the front to the back. I would do these very slowly. And of course, you can do it with your dog laying on her side. All right, Biscuit, you're going to have to stand up. <laughs> I don't know, Mom. I don't know if they can see me here. Dining room is not his favorite place to do this. I think we might have to re fix something here. So if you have an animal that's hypersensitive or tense or sore, um, you might want to start with some gentle abalone circles first before you do these zigzags. But this is what they look like on a real dog. So you're going kind of against the hair and with the hair. And I'm wearing a black sweater, which may not have been a good choice today because I will be covered with corgi hair after doing zigzags on my dog. And you can see Tristan likes these. He's getting kind of sleepy. Of course, at this time of day, he's generally sleepy. He got to go to uh, my other job yesterday which was fun for him. He sees lots of other people. It was pouring rain, but he's tired. He missed his morning nap in his room, looking out the window at the world. And I have quite a big pile of corgi hair here, just from those few little bits of zigzags. So again, this is a good touch to use if you are a groomer and you've got a dog who maybe isn't brushed too often or who doesn't really like the feeling of brushes because maybe in the past he's been brushed really roughly. These zigzag touches are a great thing to do to prepare them for grooming. Oh, he has corgi hair hanging off his nose. Bisky. And again, if you have arthritis in your hands or your fingers are pretty stiff, this touch might be one that you can have some good success with because your fingers aren't moving that much. Um, if you have a larger dog, you can really use your body to sway and move with the zigzags. Piles, piles of fuzz. Don't want to drink any tea in here or you'll be having corgi hair in your breakfast. 
So that's a look at the zigzag touch and just a reminder of its uses. It's a great way to get acquainted with a new horse or dog. It can reawaken an animal that's having an emotional shutdown, for instance, a horse um, hesitating to go into a trailer or a dog, as I mentioned before, that I've worked with who got stuck in the labyrinth and couldn't move forward when he was nervous about other dogs um, approaching from even 30 feet away. And there are other times that dogs can be overwhelmed to the point where they are in a freeze mode. So in that regard, the zigzag T-touch is also a good way to rebalance the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Remember, the sympathetic nervous system is the one associated with stress. The parasympathetic nervous system is associated with peacefulness and rest digest. So if your animal is very nervous, in fact, to the point of freezing, um, they are in a stressed sympathetic nervous system overbalance and doing these zigzag T-touches can bring them back into balance with the parasympathetic system. And it's a really good thing to do prior to a competition when you want to wake your dog up, you do them faster. And after the competition, it's a really good one to do slowly um, after a workout or a big run or a big walk just to bring them back into their body and with a horse, if you've just gotten out from a big ride and they're really sweaty and you suddenly don't have a huge amount of time to cool them out, the zigzag T-touch is a good one to do to help cool your horse down after a big ride. And the other thing, as with all T-touches that zigzag does, is promote trust and build the relationship between you and your dog or your horse or your kitty or your other animal. I have done this with guinea pigs and rabbits and rabbits especially like to have their cheeks scratched, so I start closer up here when I'm doing it with a kitty or a bunny. And if you have a long dog, like a basset hound or a corgi or a doxy, it's a really good idea to do this lower down on the tummy to encourage the dog to lift their back and try to minimize um, the strain that is on their midsection from being an extra long dog. And as I mentioned prior, it's a really great thing to do to prepare your dog for grooming. And if you are a groomer, this is a good way to begin to work with your dog that you have in for grooming who may be a new dog or one that you're not familiar with. And really, most people bring their dogs to the groomers only every six weeks or so. And therefore, it's a great thing to do to start every grooming session with every dog you see because you haven't seen them in a while and it reestablishes that trust and gives them confidence in how you're going to work with them to be respectful. So I love Zigzag T-Touch for all of those reasons. And I think it's a really um, nice one for you to use with your pet. It's similar to Lick of the Cow's Tongue. It does a lot of the same kinds of things that Lick of the Cow's Tongue does with, to promote health and um, abdominal use to keep the back up <laughs> on your longer dogs or your senior dogs. And I use it, again, sometimes in my holistic physical therapy practice when I've got my dog standing on something that's a little bit of a balance challenge, like one of those inflated dog bones or on just some pillows just to do these zigzags gives them just a little bit of challenge in their balance to encourage them to use all of the muscles in their body instead of just hanging out on their skeletal system. So I hope you can have a chance to try zigzag T-touch with your pets today. Tristan's tired of falling on the table. What do you think about zigzags, Biss? You like them? <laughs> And if your dog is shedding like mine, a zigzag T-touch can be a big help in loosening some of the dead hairs that are buried in that thick coat. I was with Linda Tellington once with Tristan at a course, and she put her hands on him to do something to show someone. And she said, oh my gosh, what a thick coat your dog has. He feels just like a bunny. No wonder you love them so much. They're so much like rabbits, because I had rabbits for many years before I had corgis. And it's true, there are many similarities between corgis and rabbits. The ears, the bunny butt, the attitude, and the coat. <laughs> so 
This is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people, and Tristan Corgi for Conversations with a Corgi, where today we have talked about the zigzag T-Touch. We'll be back with you tomorrow, and we look at some of the other specialized T-Touches. Um, we have yet to cover the mouth work, the ear work, the tail work, paw, and leg work, and I think that will wrap up some of our um, review of T-Touch body work before we move on to some of the other interesting aspects of T-Touch and some of the other work that I do. Thanks for joining us today. The sun is shining here in New England. I don't know if you can see out the window. There's a bit of sunshine for the first time in a week <laughs> and it's going to be 50 and sunny today and tomorrow. There's still plenty of snow on the ground um, and I am hoping some of my daffodils will start to poke their little heads up although they are predicting a wintry mix of snow, sleet, etc. Thursday night into Friday. So we still are not through with the winter here. And one April, we had a really big snowstorm with really wet snow. And I remember where I used to live going for a walk and everyone was trying to shovel off their roofs because it was such heavy snow. And you could just hear these thumps of the snow falling off the roofs into piles around people's homes. We won't have that this year, I hope. I don't think that's likely. So, again, have a wonderful day. And if you've got sunshine and nice weather, take a nice walk with your dog and enjoy the weather or take a trail ride with your horse and enjoy the springtime. We will see you tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi.